This is Sarah Thrower, Youth Associate at the Maxwell Park Library. I have done another dragon tutorial for one of the Canon Papercraft dragon kits that we are giving out to teens. There are three dragons. There are eight sets of three dragons, and this video is for this dragon, which is one of the most fun paper crafts I've done in a while. It's only 46 parts. The parts are huge, so you don't need a lot of serious precision, but because they're so huge, <laughs> it's actually a really, really big dragon. Like I looked at this and thought, oh, that's cool. You know, thinking it would be like, you know, like that. I almost don't want to show you how big it's going to be because I want you to be surprised. Like the whole way through, be like, oh my gosh. It took me a couple of hours to cut the pieces, uh, about an hour and a half to fold the pieces, and four or five hours to glue them all together maybe, but that's with taking breaks, um, frequent hand washes. Definitely wash your hands every couple of pages because you're gonna get glue on your hands and you don't wanna get glue on your pieces. But anyway, I just wanted to urge you before you start to take your time. Um, the benefit to having a program this way rather than the way we normally do these um, with summer reading program where you come to the library for hour, hour and a half, two hours for the program and I frantically run around trying to help people. <laughs> um, this project is not going to be completed in an hour or two hours or three hours. You can pick up your kit, which you have, and you have your instructions if you only want to just use the instructions you can or you know tune into this video like maybe you are right now to get some advice on how to cut and how to fold um and do it at your own pace you can take breaks and you can do this over the whole summer reading program you can do it over six weeks if you want it doesn't have to take that long but feel no pressure to finish it quickly this is not a race <laughs> it's not a race and i mean it's that big. So it's gonna take a while and that's okay. Crafting should be fun, should be relaxing. So, uh, you know, I just hope you guys have fun and I hope you also, you know, share your, your created creations with us on our Facebook page in the comments of this, this video and uh, hope all goes well. So good luck and happy Summer reading program, okay? So you chose the Chinese dragon randomly and you chose well. Fate is on your side. I will say because everything is labeled so well. And the instructions. And it's like, look, put that here and then that there. And that's what you get. These are really good instructions. The parts are larger. Here's some of the parts. Forehead, eyes, whisker. Antler left, antler right. Nose. I mean, they're big, so you don't need to worry. I mean, the amount of precision required with this one, I'm guessing is gonna be quite a bit less than the other two projects. So let's uh, let's dig in. Let me give you a few words of wisdom first. I've been doing paper crafting for a couple of months and I'm pretty used to it. And the video is gonna show me fast forwarding through a lot of this stuff, but that's not to say you need to try to keep up with me because when I fast forward, it's gonna be like times four. So, um, even though I'm not doing all of it in like times four fast forward motion, um, you need to take your time and, you know, take as much care as you need, as much time as you need. So 
And be sure and do this in a well-lit place. Have a parent or guardian around to assist you if needed. Uh, thanks to the Tulsa Library Trust, you do get to keep everything that came with your kit. Um, the scissors and the glue, those are yours to keep for crafting forevermore. Uh, be sure and use those responsibly. Don't glue things that shouldn't be glued. Don't cut things that shouldn't be cut. And um, yeah, that's, that's my intro. <laughs> so let's get right to it. All right, so your kit comes with a few things. First, you have your assembly instructions for your green Chinese green dragon. And this all comes from Canon Creative Park. This is their paper craft section on their website, Canon Creative Park. So if anything should happen, you lose your instructions or you accidentally cut one of your parts, you know, like say, oh no, I cut my whisker now. You can go there and print more. It's all free. You just have to check a box saying you won't sell what you make. So that's excellent. Now it is 11 pages of instructions, but don't let that worry you. That's actually, that's not bad. There are 46 parts of pieces to your kit. I come in 17 pages. Don't let that scare you either. Um, the trade-off here is that the pieces are very big and this is a good thing. This is a very, very good thing. Lots of big pieces. So you have your instructions and your parts. We'll have a golf pencil. This isn't a golf pencil, but I don't have a golf pencil on me. And you're gonna need this to label the back of your parts because even though they're labeled really well as far as how to construct them and what they are on the page, you're gonna need to write these details on the backs after you cut out the pieces just to make sure you don't lose track of what's what. So you have your pencil. Thanks to Tulsa Library Trust, you have scissors. Um, I've heard kids and teens both tell me at my library that they don't have scissors at home, and I believe that. So it was important for me to make sure that we could provide you with tools that you could keep permanently because, you know, why not enable crafting? And also you have some Aileen's Tacky Glue. Um, I don't think yours is clear. Um, but it's a lot of glue. Um, this eight ounce bottle, I mean, I've been using it for months and it's only that empty. I was gonna get two to three ounces of glue for you and I thought it would be like this big, but it's, it's the same size as this bottle. So you're gonna have a lot of glue left over for a lot of crafting. So yay, Tulsa Library Trust. And, binder clips. I find these really helpful. Uh, when you're in the gluing stage and you need to hold a couple of parts together that have been glued and while you work on some other pieces and then you can clip those also and by the time you get to a third pair that you need to glue you can take the first pair off and move to that which is why you're only gonna have three or four when you actually have over 40 parts you don't need that many you only need a couple of binder clips so that's what's in your packet. There are a few things that'll be appearing in the video that are not in your kit, but if you have them around your house, definitely use them. Um, I have just a plain set of tweezers and the parts on this dragon are pretty big, so I don't know how much you'll need to really dig in around to secure um, some of the parts together or not, but always keep these handy just in case. And I have a ruler, so I, you probably have a ruler laying around. If not, any straight edge will be helpful when you make folds. Also, I would sit in a well-lit area with a table, <laughs> that, that's where my video end marks, sit at a table with a nice 
sharp, clean edge. You can use that to help you fold over, under, or to curl parts, because we are gonna be curling parts. So if you don't have a ruler, you can, you know, use your table. Are you ready to cut some pieces out? I know I am. Don't rush through cutting. This is important, do not rush. Be patient with yourself, take your time. You're gonna hear me say that over and over again. This is my mantra with paper crafting. Take your time. This is not a rush. You can do this at your own pace. You need to take breaks. So every now and again, just for ergonomics sake, get up, stretch your back, wiggle your fingers around, um, you know, get up and move around. Don't just sit and try to do this project in one sitting. Don't do that. I rarely do that, rarely. And I've been making paper crafts for a few months now, mostly from Canon Creative Park because their stuff is so great. I have a lot of kids that um, when I do paper crafting with them, they rush really fast and they mess up. I'm like, oh, just do it for me. And I'm like, no, <laughs> because you need to learn how to use scissors and cut things properly. Um, so my first rule is you're gonna move your paper. Don't worry about angling your scissors. That's hard on your wrist, that's hard on your fingers, and it can also rip the paper. So you're gonna see me here on the whiskers, going slowly. Yes, this slowly. And turning the paper as I go. I'm not turning my scissors. And for me, I don't know if it's because I'm right-handed or what, but I am more comfortable cutting things out with the design on my left and my scissors on the right. That's just me. But the more you, the more you cut these parts out, you know, the more you'll figure out what's best for you. And watch your fingers. I know my finger underneath and my thumb are pretty close to the blades um, so be mindful of where your fingers are at also and notice oh a little bit of white there a little bit of white there don't let perfection be the enemy of the good I'm quoting colleague Alex at Peggy Homer library who has been that's been his mantra during the COVID closure as we've all been navigating through brand new aspects of our job, like making video tutorials. This is my third one. I made one for the kids craft dragon, which was one part to cut out and took an hour to complete. That's why I gave it to the kids. Don't forget. So label everything. This was the top one. So it is the right whisker. Okay, and now we have some straight parts. Same thing goes only on this one, I'm gonna show you how to cut into these really little triangles. And again, you're still just moving the part and not your scissors. Um. And you're only going to cut where they have the solid lines. Did you notice here, when it gets to this part, it's like dot, dashes, dot, dots and dashes. Don't cut that. 
that's a fold line. We'll talk about the fold lines in a bit. Next, next video, actually. So. Oh, is that bad? What is that label? Oh, this is the forehead. I'm gonna write on it right now. Forehead. And these are the eyes. Although you can like see its eyes, um, when you end up with 46 pieces, <laughs> you know, sometimes they get all jumbled up. So definitely label these either before you cut them or immediately after you cut them. And you notice I haven't delved into the instructions so much, but I think it's telling you in what order to do things. So that's kind of cool. So I just cut around. Okay, now to get into these, you're gonna cut into triangles. So you're cutting that, cutting into the triangle. And if you get a part that you almost cut all the way out, but it's like, no, just twist it and it'll pop right off. going to do this kind of the opposite way but still cutting into the triangle only moving my piece not my scissors and I still have to pull a little bit I'm gonna clean that up just a wee bit okay all right how precise those were so now I think you are ready to cut and label all of your 46 pieces so cut and label them and keep them in order just keep them in some kind of order, whatever works for you. I kept them in order as I cut because that's how they are going to come up in the assembly instructions. So cut them, label them, and then come back to this video after you've stretched your fingers, stretched your back, walked around, take a break, and I will see you after that. And we're back. So, do you have a pile of pieces all put together in some fashion? Cut out all the way from the dragon to its little pearly ball thing, the fire, and the stand. Got everything? Okay, we're not gonna work like this, I promise. So now that we've cut everything, We're going to work on folding. Now, the instructions are very clear. These solid cut lines, you've already cut everything, so you're good there. Now, mountain and valley fold is pretty standard. So, let's see. Okay, so mountain means you make a mountain and it folds like that. And a valley means you make a V, like. Anyway, the picture's better than my hands. And the mountain fold is just dots. Valley fold 
our dashes and dots. Let's see if I can see that. And I looked through this to see if there are any parts where you curve it. I don't see any. I'm going to show that to you anyway, just because, you know, that's, that's a trick I learned in paper crafting is that how to curve paper and that helps, that'll actually help with that. So anyway, so work in a well-lit space so you can see. Sometimes the lines are hard to see. But here we've got a mountain fold because it's just dashes. And here we've got another mountain fold which is also just dashes. And you don't need a ruler, just a straight edge or just your fingers. Make a mountain with that line. And it doesn't have to stay that way, you're just gonna crease it like that for now. Same for this. That's a mountain fold. Here's a mountain fold. Here's another one. It's hard to see, but it is there. Mountain, mountain, mountain. And we have two more mountain folds. Two. And four. So, and now this piece also has some valley folds. Now with cardstock. You see how it kind of loses a little bit of its color on the edges. That's okay. You can go through with a marker later and color them, but let's get these two valley folds taken care of. Valley fold. Valley fold. So, this is our forehead. something needs to be made more flexible. I'm going to show you this. Oh, see my tootsies. What you do is you take your paper along the edge of a table or just edge of a flat surface and bring it all the way and you end up with a curl. And that's going to be helpful for like these parts for the the uh, opalescent ball thing. You can do it in every direction. To make it a nice bowl shape. And I'll be doing that in the video later. It'll be fast forwarded, but see how it makes it curvy. That's how you curl the paper if you find that you need more flexible pieces. And then you have these parts like the whiskers where you have valley fold, valley fold, and then you have this straight, this mountain fold. These just kind of work Slowly. Okay, always say work slowly. And just remember it's paper, it's not glass. I'm gonna just lay it on a straight edge and move the piece along the edge. And once you got that, you can kind of go through. Make it a little more pronounced. 
Boom. That's my skirt. So, mountain folds, valley folds, and curling. Now you know what to do for the folding part. You've cut everything out, now you need to fold everything. So, you need a reminder, keep an eye on your explanation of symbols, just mountain and valley for now. And uh, take a break when you're done. Take a break throughout, it may take a while because there are 46 pieces to the fold. Do you have everything? cut, labeled, and folded like I do in some kind of order. All 46 pieces. Yes, awesome. So everything is cut and labeled and folded. So you've already done a lot of the assembly stuff. You know, it says we need scissors and glue. We have our scissors, but we've already used them, so we don't need them. And our glue. Grab your glue. Also, grab your binder clips. Should be three to four. These will help us glue. And I still have my tweezers handy. Um, those aren't in your kit, although since all the pieces are so big, I don't think I'm going to need them. Um, so that was good. I'm glad that all the pieces were so big. That really helped make cutting easier, as well as all the folding. Folding is so fun. Okay, so before we start gluing, let's talk about the rest of these symbols here. So you noticed... Let me see the head is a massive piece. So let's bring out the schnoz, the nose. Er, er, er. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, you have to pick a nose, right? So the numbered tabs, all the tabs that you see and these little things here, you're gonna glue something to them. And here it says the numbered tabs give the part, it says glue the parts together in the order indicated by the numbers. So, and it does show us in the instruction manual what part goes to what. So that tab goes under the big nose, well the bridge of the nose, and it always helps to kind of practice fold before we glue, that way the piece gets the hang of, you know, how it's going to sit. And then four goes under that red, which it naturally just kind of goes there. Put one back under. Two. That's why it's one and two, because one, two, three, four. We'll glue them and we'll hold them together with little tabs, uh, no tabs, binder clips, <laughs> sorry. So that's what those tabs are for. And you'll notice that there are other tabs that have names on them. And it's not saying what this is. It's saying what goes there. And that's the last one. It says glue tabs with symbols and part names. These tabs are to be glued onto the matching parts, which name is indicated on the tab. So on this one, hope it's not too blurry. It says whisker left, whisker left. And here it says whisker right, whisker right. So we're gonna put the whiskers onto that. So it's, like I said, the labeling on this piece is really, really good. And I'm curious to see just how big this turns out. 
So let's turn the page, page one. Now I am going to do this with you, page one. I'm gonna just like talk through the whole thing, whatever, I, I'm good at rambling <laughs> as I craft. So I'll do this with you and it'll video in real time. And hopefully by the time we get done with that, because it is 11 parts on this one page, we'll be used to the instructions that are in here, how they're laid out and how the pieces are supposed to be organized. We'll be used to looking at everything and knowing what, knows com knowing what comes next. And so when I make everything past this other page, it's going to be like fast forwarded. Um, except for maybe the, the flaming pearl. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start and I have the parts. They're all here. I didn't label them as head, forehead, ears, whatever. I labeled them as which part? Head is number one. Oh, let's see. Forehead is two. The eyes are three. Eels ah. are four L for left and four right, four R for right. Antlers are five L and five R for left and right. The nose is six because it is six in here. The jaw is seven, therefore my jaw is seven. And um, I didn't, I guess I didn't label um, these when I cut them originally. So <laughs> the, the ones that I just did for the video and, and labeled to be as a good, you know, instructor, I just pulled those out of my, my trash can and uh, they're labeled probably the way you have them labeled. So I just didn't want anyone to be confused about how my labels are in there. Like why, why doesn't that say ear? It's the same part. I just labeled them like that. So I'm going to start with one, the noggin. Let's look for those numbers and I'll try to keep this in frame. I've been not so bad. Like I have a little X right here. That's supposed to keep me in frame, but uh, I can't really see it. So I'm going to do that. Maybe that will help me a little better. So where is our one? Find our one. There's our one. One and two. In here. Oh, here comes Mo. So it looks like Mo. You really should not come up here. It's my gray cat. If you see a gray cat come into the frame, that's Mo. Of a bow tie boy. So one goes under and two comes over. So it'll be like, oh, here he comes. Hi. Hey, buddy. Come here. Get in the front. Let them see your precious face. It's like, no. Well, you can't walk on the parts. Don't walk on the parts. You can hang out if you want, but. See, that's where part one goes, Mo. And that's where part two goes. Two. You don't actually need like a ton of glue. And the fact that you put them together like that, it looks like two will kind of hold one in place, which is nice. I am still going to binder clip it. Let me see 
see how that's holding that in there. It's not holding the one underneath, but I think that's fine. Okay, now we have three and four. Okay, three and four is the same thing. Three here, four here. And you don't need to worry about pulling that tab out too much to get glue on it because you don't need much glue anyway. Three and four. Wipe off excess glue. You see me doing this. I try to do it off screen. But if I do that, that means I'm trying to get glue off my hands. And if you pull it off accidentally, that's okay too. That's gonna happen a little bit. Okay. Now I'm just gonna get them both with the one binder clip. And I did notice that there really weren't any curvy features. So this is gonna be a very angular very sharp dragon, I think. So that's kind of cool. Okay, here's five and six, but you can tell five goes here, six goes here. Five and six. Get my binder clip ready. And I have five and six. Now, sometimes with binder clips, you gotta figure out how to get them there. <laughs> Cause they're, uh, it won't reach all the way to that one. So we're still just gonna have to pinch this one down for a moment. Pinch, pinch, pinch. <gasps> Look at that. That's rounded, I forgot to fold it. I always forget to fold something. But as you can see, it is not the end of the world. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and fold this one. Now that I see that I didn't do it. Okay. Boop. So that side got folded. Continue pinching five and six a little longer. I think that's good. And I bet six and seven are right on the other side. Yes. Oh, seven and eight. I'm sorry. Seven and eight. Let's get another binder clip ready. Seven and eight is the same as five and six were. A little bit of glue. A little bit of glue. Seven goes under. And eight. But uh, anyway, I was gonna say I'm reaching underneath here. You're gonna be doing that too. Don't be afraid to like go under the parts and get a hold of them to make them do their thing. There's a lot of pinching involved in all this. Okay, so we got seven, eight, here's nine. Nine, okay. So it says this goes under here and I can see why. Boop. Like that. That's beautiful. Okay, so that's glue nine. Ooh. Okay, and it is gonna wanna pull away. Oh, the next one is 10 and 11. I'm just gonna hang on to this for a moment. And we have 10, 
right above 9 and 11. It's going to go like that. Um, yeah. You're probably going to hear me say 10 more times how great these instructions are. I mean, it's really... For this one part, for the first part to look so complex and intimidating, because it did, I was like, what? Not only is it big, but it's got all the writing on it. It was really, this has been a really intuitive part, this noggin. So, okay. Wipe away glue, pinch 10, pinch 11. I'm gonna take this off of one and two. And I can't remember which was five and six. I'm just gonna go ahead and risk it. Take those off. Okay, so let's put glue on all of the remaining triangle parts. This is awesome. Fourteen. Maybe I folded it the wrong way, and that's why I was kind of hiding. Okay. And you just pop it on. Oh, you gotta make sure that everything is. <laughs> that all the flaps that we glued are on the inside. As long as it's not unsticking. Oh, well, the pieces underneath are not flush. So see how they're. So let's make sure we get in there and hold them all down. Okay. That's better. Everything inside is adhering well. Excellent. Take that last binder clip off. And that's it. We have our head. That's awesome. Boom. Step one done. Now, we're on to part two, the forehead. So, if we hold it like this, like in when we mirror the image, because so we have one, two, three, four, this goes under and that goes under. Does that seem familiar? Under. And under, 42 says hi. And he's like, I want that B. And then three goes under. And then four goes under. Familiar? Yes. So, one, two, I'm gonna go ahead and put some on three and four. Have binder clips ready. I will get that B. And uh, you might be asking yourself, why is her cat named 42? Hold on. 10 points to anyone who can say in the comments what 42 references it is. It's a sci-fi geeky reference.
one of the last parts is a stand that you make for it. <laughs> it's so big! Oh my god! It is massive. 